Hi guys, my name is Chris Todd and this is the next in a new series of single light tutorials in the studio to create dramatic lightning effects. So today I'm using a Pixar Pro City 600, you can see it's up on the boom arm behind me there. I'm going to be pointing that straight down towards our model in a gridded beauty dish. Now what that's going to do is give us a really channeled effect on the floor. If you've ever seen Mr. Bean, it's like the starting sequence when he falls on the floor from the sky on there. It's going to give us a really dramatic effect, you could liken it to a street light look or just really harsh one directional lighting. Now again, I'm a big fan of one light setups which is why I'm doing these tutorials I'm a big believer and you don't have to have loads of different lights to create a really cool and interesting portrait so we're going to shoot a few different images on this setup today just showing you how little changes in the, either the model's position or the model shape and the way we've angled the light will make a big difference to the portrait so we've brought our model Oliver into the scene now and what we're going to do is start with we've got him standing straight up I've got that boom arm with the light straight above his head and it's actually angled slightly back now what I don't want to do is make that light go straight it down because we're going to get some really unflattering shadows under the chin, under the nose, under the eyes, and that's not what we want. We do want a dramatic, quite high contrast image, but we need to angle that light back ever so slightly just to make sure that we get a little bit of fill light under there. So, Oliver, if you turn to the side, put your thumb in your pocket, and just glance back over your shoulder. Good lad. And just lean your head back ever so slightly. Perfect. So I'm shooting this at f2.5, it's 1600th of a second, that's 1 slash 1600. I want to shoot with quite a shallow aperture, so I'm using high speed sync with the Pixpro SD3 trigger system, which allows me to shoot at speeds up to 1 8000th of a second. So I can see from these images I've got a nice pool of light on the floor, it's, what that's doing is just giving us a natural vignette on the floor, slightly different shape. Um, it's not perfectly round, that's just because of the angle we have the light set at. Now, what I'm getting here is still getting quite harsh shadows on all of us chin. I'm okay with that because I wanted quite a dramatic effect. I'm not too worried about that. If I wanted to fill those, I could bring a reflector in or even bring a triflector into the front. Um, but we might lose some of the image because I do want to shoot this section at full length. Now, what I'm going to do now is ask Oliver to sit down. Okay, sit down on the floor there. I'm going to lower the height of this boom now so the light's not spilling around as much. It's going to give us quite a tight circle in comparison to what we've just been shooting with. So what I've done now, I've lowered that light to the ground because we've got all of us sitting down behind me there. Now what that means is the floor is going to reflect the light that little bit more. So we're going to get a little bit of fill light under the eyes, under the chin, and fill some of those deep shadows that we had. Now it won't be as, re as effective as a full reflector. I'm okay with that. I don't really want to use a reflector for this image. Now the reason I use a grid for this is to channel that light. I'm going to show you now what difference it would make to take that grid off and let that light flood the scene. Now because we're using a beauty dish, the light is quite directional anyway, it's quite a harsh light. But that grid just helps to channel it that little bit more. I'm just going to clip the grid off now, it's dead easy to take off. I'm going to shoot on exactly the same settings, which will probably be quite a bit overexposed because that grid does take away quite a bit of light from the scene. So you can see a massive difference there in terms of how much light's entering the scene there. Because of that grid before, it stopped that light flooding all over. This studio is quite white. The light does bounce around, reflect all over the place. But having that grid in place just makes sure as it channels and comes straight down. So guys, that's it. A very simple one light technique, which you can use pretty much anywhere. You don't need a big open space. Using a Pixar Pro City 600 in a gridded 30 centimeter beauty dish. If you like what you've seen and you'd like to see more, I post these updates every single Wednesday, so please come back next week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave any comments if there's any particular lighting setups you'd like to see. Thanks guys.